For over a century, Detroit, Michigan has hosted an event that brings together the giants of the automotive industry from around the world. Downtown Detroit, Cobo Hall. It's inside these walls where the manufacturers unveil their newest concepts, latest technologies, and stunning designs. Walking the show floor, one will find the exotic, the rugged, tons of horsepower, and even a little fun. It's a spectacle that can only be the 2016 North American International Auto Show. NBC Sports presents the North American International Auto Show, better known as the Detroit Auto Show. And welcome inside Cobo Hall to the 2016 North American International Auto Show. I'm Marty Snyder. It's our 12th year of bringing you the Detroit Auto Show here on NBC Sports. And after a record-setting sales year in 2015 for the auto industry in the United States, the 2016 Auto Show has not disappointed. With over 40 unveilings, of course, that brings the latest technology, the latest cool concepts, and, of course, production vehicles you can buy in your showroom right now. And to bring you all of that, part of our NBC Sports motorsports team with Kelly Stavis, Kevin Lee, and Townsend Bell. And let's kick things off with Rod Alberts, the Executive Director of the North American International Auto Show, always an event here in Detroit. What kind of tone, though, does this show set for the rest of the year for the entire industry? Well, it's so important in Detroit with all the brands that come in from around the world, all the execs, CEOs that have been here the last two weeks. Uh, it, it is important for the economy and uh, to let the world know what product is out there. And we did put the world on wheels, so one way or the other, if you've not been to Detroit, you've got to come in for this show. No doubt this is the show to be at. Record setting year in 2015 for the auto industry here in the United States. How does the industry top that? The key to the whole thing is it's what the manufacturers have been doing for the last six years when things were so challenging before. They've gotten aggressive and assertive with uh, coming up with new technologies and product. No doubt the technology is the key thing. Everybody is connected to cars these days and that's what the new generation wants. Across the board, not one product on the show floor is really lagging behind. They're all on top of the game now. And you can walk the show floor and find one for you, I guarantee today. They may be some of them up there in the ultra luxury range, but there's one for you out there. Well, speaking of ultra luxury, we're ready to see some cars. We'll start with Kelly Stavis, and let's begin with some luxury, Kelly. Yeah, Marty, let's talk luxury, and why not start at the top? The top of Lincoln, that is. Now, you'll remember they made a big splash in New York last spring when they unveiled the Continental Concept. Well, here in Detroit, we've got the real thing. This is the car that Lincoln hopes will help it better compete with Cadillac along with other luxury brands. Now, it's been 15 years since the Continental went off market, but now Lincoln's flagship sedan is back and better than ever. The all-new 2017 Lincoln Continental sports a bold, athletic look and Lincoln's new signature grille, but it still keeps a sleek design thanks to flowing lines. The Continental's four E-latch electronic door handles open at the touch of a button, inviting you into a cabin packed with the amenities you'd expect in a luxury sedan. Up front, passengers can take advantage of a 30-way adjustable seat Lincoln calls perfect position. But if you prefer to be chauffeured and sit in the back, you can still enjoy reclining rear seats that can be heated, cooled, or even give you a massage. Lincoln promises owners will enjoy effortless power thanks to a 3-liter twin-turbocharged V6 with an expected 400 horsepower. The new Volvo S90 reflects the Swedish car maker's ongoing design revolution. Under ownership of Chinese Geely since 2010, Volvo is working to replace every one of its models before this decade is out. The S90 has a proud yet non-aggressive face, characterized by the concave grille with a new Volvo iron mark, and the Thor's hammer lights deliver an unmistakable presence on the road. While design is a high priority, so too is safety. The goal is that nobody is killed or seriously injured in a new Volvo by the year 2020. To help achieve this, the Volvo S90 will be the first car in the U.S. that makes semi-autonomous technology standard with Pilot Assist 2. This technology allows the vehicle to automatically maintain a set speed or distance to the car in front, as well as giving gentle steering inputs to keep you properly aligned within your lane. The S90 also brings safety features like city safety, which detects pedestrians, cyclists, even large animals on the road. Your car warns you and, if necessary, brakes if you don't intervene. On the inside, safety does not compromise comfort. The S90 features a raked, ergonomically positioned front dash and a blend of innovative tech with natural materials create an elegant interior ambiance. 
The new S90 comes available as a T6 inscription or a T8 twin engine plug-in hybrid. Now let's send it over to Townsend Bell who has naturally found some sports cars. Well thanks Kelly. It is great to be back here at Detroit and I love starting things off with some punch. We are standing at the world premiere of the all new BMW M2 Coupe. This is a proper M car through and through. It has all of that muscle and style of the BMW M cars we've come to love, but in the two series chassis, proportionally it's about the same size of that E30 M3, the original M3 from the late 80s. But in this case, it has about twice the horsepower of that original car, 365 horsepower, and we're looking at its launch color, Long Beach Blue. It's got a six speed manual gearbox with rev matching, or seven speed dual clutch gearbox, this thing is bad to the bone. I can't wait to drive it. I'm here at Lexus with what I think is the absolute star of the show. This is the LC500. When I first saw it, I thought, nice concept car. Then I found out they're gonna make this thing. It's gonna be for sale, very much like you see here. Absolutely beautiful. It starts up front with that classic Lexus spindle design, but not as angular as you've seen on some of the other models. It's been smoothed out and refined and that continues all the way along the side of the car as the air flows very elegantly up and over and through with the brake cooling ducts here. But as we come to the back of the vehicle, it gets very distinctive. It's got a nice subtle shoulder here, but then you see these amazing sort of L-wing tail lights that are just beautiful. Now, as we come back around and start talking about the interior, one thing that's really obvious right away is they thought a lot about the passenger at Lexus. In any high performance car, it's usually all about the driver. In this case, my wife would love this when I'm driving. Two big grab handles, you're sort of cocooned in the passenger position. This is a 467 horsepower aluminum V8, same motor you see in the RCF and the GSF, but in this case, a 10 speed automatic transmission. 10 speeds, probably only needs six, but those upper four are gonna be very efficient for sure on the highway. I believe that this car represents a complete new direction for Lexus. This is an amazing vehicle. Very impressed here at Lexus. Hi, I'm Kevin Lee. Coming up, we'll take a look at how car companies are transforming themselves into tech companies. All the latest gizmos, gadgets, and a virtual user's manual. And I'll show you a couple of compacts, the Chevrolet Cruze hatchback and a stylish new concept car from Scion made for yuckies. I'll explain that later. The 2016 North American Car of the Year is the Honda Civic. Welcome back to Detroit. It's one of the most prestigious awards at the Detroit Auto Show, North American Car of the Year. Ten years after winning it in 2006, the Honda Civic is back in victory lane in 2016, winning North American Car of the Year. And the 2016 Civic went through an ambitious remake, receiving a sportier look, along with better performance with Honda's new turbocharged engine. The sporty, fun Civic you've come to know and love is back. The award-winning sedan version is available right now in your Honda showrooms. The coupe will be available this March. And with a wide price range and available features, the Civic is a fantastic deal. And now it's time to hear from Kevin Lee, who's finally going to explain exactly what a yucky is. Kevin? Ah, uh, yes, Marty. We still need to define who or what a yucky is. Scion has developed a CHR concept compact that they say is designed for the young urban creative. They've labeled that group yuckies. This vehicle, when it's in production, will be available in two different types, a turbocharged gasoline-powered engine and the other based on the Toyota Prius platform. Think of it as a Prius with attitude. The Scion CHR has a compact shape and a high ride. Compact, high, ride. CHR, get it? Scion execs say the CHR doesn't fit into any traditional car category. It's more a coupe than a compact, more a crossover than an SUV, but none of those descriptions seem quite right. Maybe when the car goes into production later this year, it'll all become clear. 
Scion CHR is still in the concept stage, but Chevrolet's cruise hatchback is already a reality. It's available in Canada right now and goes on sale in the U.S. in the fall. The car has shed some weight, 200 pounds to be exact, and grown up a little, with a higher seat height to improve driver visibility and better compete against crossovers. This compact hatchback has more storage space behind the rear seat, 22.7 cubic feet, than some mid-size or even full-size sedans. And if you push down the rear seat, it almost doubles the space available. The 2017 Cruze hatchback is stylish, it's economical, it's got a lot of interior space, excellent cargo room, and it's really the result of an innovative platform. Uh, what you're looking at behind us is truly a combination of great design and some pretty creative engineers. The 2017 hatch has a new roof line, rear end with a spoiler and wraparound taillights. It looks a bit sharper than the Cruze sedan, but shares the same turbocharged 1.4 liter four-cylinder engine. And it's just as economical, expected to get at least 40 miles per gallon on the highway. Economical, but not stingy with technology. The Cruise Hatch offers support for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and safety features like Lane Keep Assist and rear cross-traffic warnings and collision alerts. Well, Kevin, if you need a little bit more room for the family, let's talk about SUVs. We're here at GMC with the all-new GMC Acadia Denali. Now, this thing is a New Year's resolution in every which way. A nose job, a facelift, a tummy tuck. It's 700 pounds lighter, and that leads to much more dynamic handling, I'm told, from the GMC engineers. Now, they paid close attention not only to an all-new styling look, in this more compressed vehicle, but they wanted to keep things like seven passengers in terms of seating. Inside, it's a quieter cabin. They really tried to engineer all the road noise they could out of this design without adding weight. And with a quieter cabin comes better entertainment. And to that end, you've got USB ports in all three rows. That's a big problem in the Bell family these days. Where do you charge your devices to enjoy the entertainment? Continuing on with SUVs here at BMW, this is the all-new X4 M40i. This is sort of for someone that likes the practicality of a BMW 3 Series sedan, maybe likes to sit a little higher up in the utility of an X5, but then, boy, I'd love to drive something like a sports car. Well, this is your all-inclusive package right here, your jack-of-all-trades. You can see the M badge treatment with things like the sky gray aero slats here, the gray mirrors. It's not a full M high-performance vehicle. It sort of sits in between the base model. It's got the fun button, though, inside. That's right next to the shift lever. What that does is ramp up some of the engine timing, the shift points. It opens up the exhaust valves and creates a much more dynamic driving experience. So for something that attempts to do it all, BMW is still laying claim to that ultimate driving machine. The Buick Y-Job, introduced in 1938, is widely recognized as the auto industry's first concept vehicle. Since then, Detroit has become a launching point for many lofty concepts, and this year, there's certainly no shortage. From a large seven-passenger SUV by Kia to this stunning two-plus-two rear-wheel drive sports coupe, the Buick Avista. The inspiration for this, it almost can be described as a mountain pass that you would love to drive a car on. Kind of a spirited performance, um, something very elegant, beautiful, um, that you can take along that road. Very different from what we're used to seeing out of Buick. Why this sort of aggressive, sporty styling? Well, there's a lot of bandwidth in the brand. Um, this side of the Buick brand we like to explore as kind of our sporty, sophisticated, modern approach to the Buick brand. And I definitely think there's space for that and there's more of a progression for the brand that can go in this direction. The Avista has intense technical and surface details. Exposed carbon fiber and aluminum accents throughout reinforce the precision of the performance-oriented driving experience. Inside, Buick enhanced the passenger's sensory experiences with next-generation quiet tuning and air quality control. The Avista includes advanced noise cancellation technology, ionic air purifiers, and even aromatherapy. I mean, how could you possibly have road rage with the smell of lavender in the air? Designers of the Avista were tasked to create a car that they'd want to drive. Well, who wouldn't want to drive this twin turbocharged 3 liter V6? And with active fuel management and stop start technology, it's both powerful and efficient. 
If a sports coupe won't meet your family needs, perhaps a large sport you, named for a rugged Colorado mountain town, will. The Kia Telluride, this fierce looking vehicle seeks a harmony between man, machine, and nature. And Kia is testing the waters with this full size, three row, seven passenger luxury SUV concept. Each exterior detail ties together with similar shapes and sizes, and the Telluride incorporates a much larger version of Kia's signature tiger nose grille, but its menacing face brings an attitude all its own. The latest technology is pretty handy for the driver, too. Fingerprint activated push button start fires up Telluride's 3.5 liter V6. Combine that with the 130 horsepower electric motor and the total hybrid power would bring a hearty 400 horsepower. He insists the Telluride concept was purely an exercise in design, but they did consider North America's desire for large SUVs when creating it. Now what's happening over at Mercedes-Benz, Townsend? Lots of amazing stuff. Lots of different powertrain options will become available with the new E-Class. They're going to start with the four-cylinder turbocharged motor that makes about Oh, 240 horsepower in the E300. And eventually the plug-in hybrid we see here, about 34 miles of range on the plug-in. Lots of cool stuff, but when we come back, we're gonna learn more about high technology with Kevin Lee from the North American International Auto Show. Chrysler, Town and Country. The 2017 Chrysler Pacifica Hybrid. Welcome back to Detroit Pop Quiz. What was the first year a minivan was on the market here in the U.S. and who manufactured that car? Well, the answer, 1983, and it was Dodge with their caravan. Well, here in 2016 at the International Auto Show, Chrysler is at it once again, unveiling the 2017 Chrysler Pacifica and the Pacifica Hybrid as well. You can head to your local Chrysler dealer this spring to pick up a Pacifica, and you can also head there later this year for the hybrid version. Speaking of electric power, Kelly has more on electric cars. Marty, the darling of the electrics here in Detroit is the Bolt EV. Carrying the momentum from the Las Vegas Consumer Electronics Show announcement, the Chevrolet Bolt EV is still drawing all kinds of attention. It is the first affordable, long-range, plug-in electric car. This perfect around town vehicle has a projected range of 200 miles. And should you need to replenish, you can refill the battery to 80% in just 30 minutes. Designed as a small crossover SUV, the Bolt EV will comfortably seat five passengers. Ample space is made available inside with the design of the flat battery pack mounted beneath the floor. Its floating instrument panel contains a 10.2 inch MyLink screen and you can consider it your portal to technology. Even with all that great technology, the Bolt EV will break the affordability barrier with the price below $30,000 after full federal tax credits, and it will be available by the end of this year. Now let's hear what else is hot in technology here at the show from Kevin. Kelly, we mentioned earlier how car companies in many ways were becoming like tech companies. Well, here's something that's totally useful, an easy way to back up a truck with a trailer or a boat attached, it's as easy as simply turning it up. Ford's Pro Trailer Backup Assist not only helps you reverse, it prevents jackknifing as well. The driver controls the knob and the speed, the truck does the rest, so you don't have to turn in the opposite direction. Very simple. The system can be programmed for up to 10 different trailers, up to 33 feet long. Ford also has updated its infotainment system, Sync 3, with new hardware and software. This whole screen is brand new. And so you have all your, your tabs on the bottom right here, like you would on your smartphone or your tablet. You just simply push on the bottom where you'd want to access your audio or your climate or your phone. And when you're driving, you, all you need to do is hit this button right here, and then a chime will pop up, and then you would say your command, like 80s on 8s, or play artist Rolling Stones. 
or call home. The new SYNC 3 is available now in most Ford and Lincolns. From Hyundai, augmented reality replaces your owner's manual. By just framing your engine with any smartphone or tablet, the Hyundai Virtual Guide app will recognize what you're looking at. Want to change your air filter? Just select the icon and a short animation shows you how. Inside the car, you can learn how to set up your Bluetooth or learn just about anything you need about your car. It even has information about your seat settings, all without opening that dreaded owner's manual. The app is available this March, beginning with their Sonata. BMW 7 Series has touchscreens you don't have to touch. Instead, you can turn up the volume, answer a call, or hang up with hand gestures. Mercedes E-Series sedans have introduced safety technology that moves passengers away from the point of impact in car crashes. We have our pre-safe system, which is now added by a pulse from the side. Before the impact is coming from another car, you are moved away from the side, so you have a bigger distance to the car that might hit you. You may not think of car passenger tires as being high-tech, but Michelin is so excited about the new materials technology in its Pilot Sport All Season 3 Plus that it threw the tire its own press event. Developed for Formula One racing and derived from materials used in endurance racing at Le Mans, the tire has asymmetrical tread and biting edges to help driving in the snow and improve winter time braking. The Michelin Pilot Sport All Season 3 Plus will be available in March for $149 each. Stay with us, more cars, trucks, SUVs, and concepts coming up. Acura Precision Concept. Welcome back to Detroit, and at the Detroit Auto Show, we have seen some cool concepts unveiled. Maybe the coolest from Acura. I found John Aketa, the Vice President and General Manager of Acura. Tell me, John, what led to this Precision Concept. What's led for the Precision Concept is our mantra right here, precision crafted performance. Uh, Acura is about precision crafted performance and what we're looking at here is the future of styling that's going to express that uh, uh, tagline for us and uh, it's a very exciting day for us. Yeah. Well you mentioned the new phrase, precision crafted performance. How, what does that say about what Acura is doing going forward? I think it's, it's to be noted, we've been around since 89 mm -hmm. and uh, back, back in the day uh, that was the mantra, you know, and uh, to tell you the truth, in the history of things, um, we didn't even talk about luxury when we first started. Huh. All right, all we talked about was performance, and so we really want to make sure that our styling is exuding performance. That's one of the key areas. So, whether we're doing the brand new NSX over there, to you know, back behind you, or this vehicle, it has to feel and look like it's a performance brand. It's a performance car. So those are the things that were given the the job to given to this uh, design team to 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 show off for us. Well, they certainly knocked it out of the park. You mentioned the NSX. It's always been one of my favorites. What about the new NSX? The new NSX, I would say, you know, when we talked about the direction for the brand and we talked about precision crafted performance, it wasn't something that we thought about yesterday to put it, bring yeah, it to the show. Sure. We've been working on this one, for, you know, <laughs> soul searching again for a while now. But uh, we got the team together and basically we asked the team, you know, we don't want to write up a manifesto or something like that, but uh, please just go make precision right. crafted performance and the team got to make uh, together and they made the NSX so that is the vehicle that this brand has to live up to all of its uh, innovation all of the human centered thinking you know the dynamic designs and the zero delay type launch controls and things all those are attributes that the car brings that this brand has to live up to would you mind if Townsend Bell and I borrowed a couple of NSXs? I mean, we'll, I promise we'll bring them back in a couple hours. Unscratched. <laughs> Unscratched. Uh, <laughs> I don't have the keys because uh, if they give me the keys, I'll be off driving off myself. So, yeah, I don't know where the keys are. But, uh, yeah, we got to keep, uh, keep the car here make sure that the guys at the show get to see us. So, yeah, going to have to take a pass on that. All right. Well, we appreciate you considering it, though, and some great stuff coming from Acura, no doubt about it. Now let's head over to Kevin Lee for something truly out of this world. Kevin. 
You're right, Marty, it is out of this world because Audi had a lunar rover in its booth. Audi is supporting a group of German scientists competing for Google's $30 million Lunar X Prize and hopes to put this lunar Audi Quattro on the moon next year. Back here on Earth, this is Audi's H-Tron Quattro Concept SUV. It runs on hydrogen. No gasoline, no batteries, no emissions at all. It runs simply on water. So you don't have to charge it up. It only takes about four minutes to fill her up at a hydrogen station. Now right now, those are only available in California, but remember, this is a futuristic vehicle. So for now, cheers. Nissan's car of the future is the electric powered IDS concept. IDS stands for Intelligent Driving System, a car that can drive itself. The steering wheel, actually their steering grips, retract and the front seats swivel around to facilitate conversation. Or a poker game if you're the kind of person who likes to gamble, which you probably would be if you're willing to let your car drive itself. Nissan's Takashi Sunda says the car will be a better driver than the average human driver, and maybe more courteous too. A display at the base of the windshield can flash messages to pedestrians and other cars. This car not only drives itself, but it can talk to pedestrians. So, Takashi, can I program it to say, hey, get out of my way? <laughs> it, it is uh, uh, communicate is a very polite way. Say hello and uh, uh, how to say, after you or such kind of polite way. This is a fairly wild design. The IDS is only 54 inches tall. It's made of carbon fiber, except for the roof, which is all glass. And its rear doors swing open to the rear, and there's no pillar making it easier to get into and out of when that poker game breaks up. When can you buy one of these? Nissan says sometime after 2020. The weather and the roads have turned nasty here in Detroit, which makes it the perfect time to introduce Audi's all-new A4 all-road Quattro. This vehicle has been completely redesigned from the ground up, meaning it's got a new engine, new transmission, new electronics, new everything. The vehicle is designed to provide driving comfort and off-road capabilities. The A4 all-road Quattro is a truly durable vehicle that's been tested in all weather conditions, from a 30 below Arctic environment to dry and dusty 130 degree desert conditions. The vehicle has a charismatic angular look and the latest in driver comfort and safety systems previously found in upmarket cars. A lot of the features that were previously available on much higher segment vehicles are now coming down to the segment of the A4. So you see, you know, head-up display, for example, or you see, a, a, you know, a list of connected services which you can control from your smartphone. Driver assistance systems that I mentioned, you know, adaptive cruise control used to be a feature that was maybe only on Audi A8. Audi has not yet released pricing on the A4 all-road Quattro, but they expect it to hit dealerships later this fall. Now, if an SUV interests you, then perhaps Buick has just the vehicle. The Buick Envision was designed to fill the gap between the brand's two current SUVs, the Encore and the Enclave. And as Buick continues to revamp its image and attract a slightly younger demographic, designers of the Envision had a unique opportunity. General Motors uh, gave us the capability to start completely from scratch. Uh, we took a clean piece of paper and they gave us the idea that we were going to do a luxury crossover Buick and we got to design it from, from really the first line on the paper. So it was a truly amazing uh, engineering feat that we got to accomplish. Loaded with luxury offerings, Buick is most proud of its quiet tuned cabin and adaptive cruise control. Say you hit uh, a traffic jam and people are slowing down to 25 and 15 miles an hour, stress gets high, everyone gets frustrated, but now the Buick Envision can tell you just sit back and just focus on steering. It'll apply the gas, it'll apply the brake, it'll keep this maintained gap to really lower the stress level in the car and give you just this really fun, confident driving experience. And for when you want to take control, the Envision has a two liter turbocharged engine delivering 252 horsepower. It's no wonder the Envision has already been recognized as the Motor Trend SUV of the year in China. Though the Envision was designed here in North America, it's actually the first U.S. branded car to be manufactured in China, showing just how big the global spread has become for General Motors. Now it's time to talk some speed. Let's see what Townsend has found over at Porsche. Well, Kelly, we might be in Detroit in the dead of winter, but if I close my eyes, I feel like I'm in Malibu, rolling through the hills, racing through the hills in this 2017 Porsche 
911 Turbo S Cabriolet. Now, it's nice at a show where everything's about the new, the creative, the unique, that you've got something that's a timeless classic that simply evolved with subtle enhancements. Like, for instance, this rotary knob on the steering wheel that'll adjust chassis modes. These nice little gap inserts here on the steering wheel. My one beef, I've got one of these at home, a 991. Where do you put your cell phone? Mine always falls out, and they haven't improved that yet, so that's on the to-do list. But who cares about calling people when you're hauling up the road in this bad boy? Outside, you've got nice design enhancements. Up front, there's some subtle adjustments with these horizontal slats and turn lights that are you know, nicely detailed, but you really see it out back in the engine bay with this vent and grill is probably the most distinctive thing that I've seen on this enhanced 911. But all in all, it's a classic that's evolved so elegantly, and it's fast, 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds, fitting for any California player. Coming up, more sports cars, some tough trucks, and exactly how big will manufacturers go when it comes to screen size in the cars? More to come from Detroit. Here it is. This is the new Fusion. Welcome back to Detroit. In 2012, Ford did the first redesign of the Ford Fusion. As you saw a moment ago in 2016 here at the North American International Auto Show, they've given the Ford Fusion a facelift once again and come out with a new version of the Ford Fusion called the Ford Fusion Sport. It has a 325 horsepower engine. That's over 100 horsepower more than the standard EcoBoost version. It also comes with all-wheel drive on the new Fusion, 19-inch alloy wheels, and dual outlet twin exhaust add to the sporty look of this model. Along with the Sport, Ford also unveiled the Platinum model, an upscaled premium level that offers high quality leathers, custom 19 inch wheels, and a new honeycomb grille. The Ford Fusion Platinum gets LED headlamps and a better ride quality and handling. How? One way is through a pothole detection system that can actually sense when you're going over a pothole and make the ride smoother. How cool is that? You know, it's funny in a car market today that seems to be flooded with more crossovers and more SUVs, Ford has doubled down with the redesign of the Ford Fusion in the sedan market. For more on sedans, let's go to Kevin. Marty, the concept for this Infiniti Q60 was unveiled at last year's Detroit Auto Show. Often when far out concepts are made into real world cars, the results are much tamer. But not this time. Except for government approved headlights and side mirrors, the final production model of the Q60 doesn't stray far from the original idea. It's a sleek, muscular two-door sports coupe, all crisp creases and curves with a powerful V6 engine producing 300 or 400 horsepower depending on the configuration. There's also a 208 horsepower inline four available. Infinity says the Q60's power to efficiency ratio is best in its class. Inside, there are options for red or white leather, aluminum or wood trim, and Infinity's direct adaptive steering, one of several steering and handling features on this car. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the all new Genesis G90. Like Nissan's Infinity brand and Toyota's Lexus, Hyundai has created its own luxury line, Genesis. Hyundai has been making a Genesis line of cars for a while now, but now the company doesn't want you to call them Hyundais anymore. Frankly, it'd be impossible to mistake the Genesis G90 for a Hyundai Sonata. It is without question a luxury car. Actually, you could call it ultra luxury. What do you think makes this model stand out? The design. We're calling the design language athletic elegance. You'll notice the long flowing hood, the short overhangs in the front, the nice wide stance. It's gonna give this Genesis G90 a real presence when it's going down the road. And the good news is we're using this design language in the next six Genesis models that are gonna come out by 2020. There are three engine options, two of them available in the US, a 3.6 liter V6 and a five liter V8. Both are eight-speed automatics with rear-wheel drive. All-wheel drive is optional. 
Inside, the first thing you'll notice before you even sit down is the huge 12.3 inch high def display. That's larger than some laptop screens. And then once you do sit down, you'll notice the lush leather interior. And as far as the driver's seat, a 22 way power adjustment. The adjustable rear seats in this Korean made car have a German seal of approval from the Campaign for Healthier Backs. It's as if Hyundai, I mean Genesis, wants to put German car manufacturers on notice. It probably most closely resembles an S-Class Mercedes, but not quite. But then the Genesis G90 probably won't cost as much as a Mercedes S500 either. The list of the G90's Lux features is way too long to recite, so you'll have to trust me when I say that this car is a serious entry into the luxury sedan segment. Well, here at Nissan, it is all about the muscle. This diesel truck is designed to tell us, can it play as hard as it can work? This Titan off-road concept is just beefy and bad to the bone. It's 37 inch tires. It's got these amazing solid billet aluminum wishbone underneath, beautiful gold anodized treatment. Lots of cool features, but we want to talk about the design inspiration. This is Randy Rodriguez, project design leader. Randy, thanks for talking to us. Talk us uh, through the design inspiration here. Well, we started the inspiration with its name, Titan. It comes from Greek mythology. Uh, these immortal giants of superhuman strength and endurance. And we just think that's perfect for a truck. So I really was gravitated towards like masks, their, their helmets, and try to get that on the front end of this truck where it looks like this protective, menacing look on the front end of this vehicle. So the strength in this design carries all the way through to the interior. I mean, this thing just means business. It is a solid billet aluminum steering wheel. I've never seen anything like it. It is just beefy and absolutely inflexible. Inside, you've got these uh, cold and hot containers. You could have a chilled smoothie on the left, hot coffee on the right. There's so much muscle in this thing, it makes you wonder, this could be the first vehicle to ever get tested for growth hormone or other PEDs. I gotta go, guys. There's a few daisies I'm gonna mow over. Last year here at the Auto Show, the Smart 4.2 was unveiled, a redesign of the car. This year, something new as well. Look, we're convertible now. You can now get this this spring at your Smart dealer, and Smart says this car is fit for fun. Speaking of fit, at 6.4, let's see if I can fit inside the Smart 4.2. And yes, indeed, I can. And they do say this car is indeed a ton of fun to drive. Coming up from Detroit, we're going to talk to last year's Indy 500 winner, Juan Pablo Montoya, and his car owner, Roger Penske. Stay tuned. The new Mercedes-AMG SLC 43. Welcome back to Detroit. That's the unveiling of the new AMG SLC 43 for Mercedes-Benz as they continue to revamp their lineup. Now, C is in the name to pay tribute to the C-Class, which has been around forever for Mercedes. But remember, this is an AMG, and this thing exudes race car. 362 horsepower in this car and a twin turbo V6 engine and zero to 60 in 4.6 seconds. The vehicle characteristics can be adjusted instantly using five different modes, comfort, sport, sport plus, eco, and individual. Once you get inside the SLC, you really feel like you're inside of a race car. You've got the suede and leather steering wheel, the carbon fiber dash, the paddle shifters that make you feel like you're Lewis Hamilton. Now, the SLC will be in your Mercedes-Benz dealership this summer. Price point, though, has not been set yet. That will be set this spring, but we're hearing it'll be well under $100,000. Should I be surprised? My friend Townsend Bell has found more sports cars. T-Bell? So last year, Marty showed us this, the Ford GT, but now we get to touch it and see it up close and appreciate all of the beauty for this amazing supercar from Ford, which really has one goal and one goal only, which is to go fast and ultimately to win the 24 hours of Le Mans. Now, I've actually shared the racetrack with this car just recently in preparation for the Daytona 24 hours, which will be the debut race, but this is the street car and it is amazing. Now, as it sits here, it's got a couple of innovations that have been recently announced. 
The Gorilla Glass, for instance, which is what we use on our cell phones, has lightened the windshield by 12 pounds. And we also get to understand its dynamic capabilities. This is the street ride height, if you will. But if you take this to the track, the car is gonna lower for speed. The rear wing is gonna come up, look at this. And then when you hit the brakes going into a hairpin, for instance, under heavy braking, the rear wing's actually gonna pivot up like an air dam and help slow you, much like reverse thrusters on an airplane, creating high drag. One of the most iconic features of this car are these rear arches, so you can see the air flow so cleanly through this. It's amazing that this thing is going to be on the street. It's basically a prototype looking race car, street legal from Ford. So earlier in the show, Ford announced the all new Ford Fusion. Now that body style has to be translated to their NASCAR program. This is the number 21 Ford Fusion. It's going to be driven by Ryan Blaney this season. Now I'd throw a, a Bo Duke leg in there for you, but I don't want to pull, pull a hammy. Inside, however, gone are all the analog gauges, no more needles, tachometers, it's all digital. A full widescreen display with 16 different pages that are individually designed by the drivers to give them all their critical information. Now, speaking of NASCAR coverage, you can follow the sport all season long on NBC, your home of NASCAR, and on the Verizon IndyCar Series side. Kevin caught up with Roger Penske and his Indy 500 winning driver. Well, Townsend, this guy, Juan Pablo Montoya, has what you and every race driver dreams of his image on the Borg Warner Trophy for winning the Indy 500 last year and he actually has it a couple of times from winning 15 years ago here's his boss Roger Penske who has 16 500 wins to his credit in Detroit picking up the baby Borg the replica the Indy 500 when you win that it's like the gift that keeps on giving isn't it it's, it's pretty amazing it's, you know the first time around I didn't do any of this because I moved to Europe so it's pretty nice to actually experience everything, and I'm being here in Detroit with Roger is pretty special. Your second go around in IndyCar after the venture into Formula One and NASCAR with great success. I don't think any of us thought you would ever come back. How much are you enjoying this second go around in IndyCar? Oh, it's been unbelievable. I mean, the opportunity to run with Roger and, and you know, it's, it's been fun. There's no pressure. I just want to win, so it makes it easy. Roger, a week after the 100th Indianapolis 500, you'll be hosting IndyCar here in your adopted hometown in Detroit. What do events like the Detroit Grand Prix and the Auto Show mean to this community? Well, it's a renaissance that we have here in Detroit with the Auto Show every year. It's really the bedrock of the city, the home of automotive here in Detroit, and certainly as we have the Belle Isle Grand Prix and the Twins, it really brings the whole region together, and guess what? We got some great racing. Thank you both. Good luck in 2016. That's Juan Pablo Montoya and Roger Penske. And with us, we have another member of Team Penske, the always outgoing Elio Castroneves is here in Detroit. Congrats, Juan Pablo, on your win last year why are you there i'm here that's right for the first time rising in the car series has a display in detroit auto show and it's so cool you can actually see an indy car up close the trophy some models you know there is a lot going on so many cool things around but next year to, on the 100th running it's going to be my car and i'm going to win detroit bella as well i want it all i want everything but right now i'm going to check out some chevys see ya The North American Truck Utility of the Year is the Volvo XC90. Welcome back to Detroit. Time to hand out some more hardware. This time, North American Truck and Utility of the Year. And for 2016, the Volvo XC90 wins the award. It's the first time in 13 years the XC90 has claimed that award, and it won in a landslide. Why? Well, the 2016 version of the XC90 has gone through a complete renovation from the chassis to the drivetrain. Everything is different on this SUV. Maybe the most impressive part, it's a three-row SUV with a four-cylinder engine. That's very rare. It also comes as the first ever seven-seat plug-in hybrid. And this version is really cool, 400 horsepower. And check this out, 
53 miles to the gallon in an SUV. That's very impressive. Style-wise inside, Volvo hired an interior designer from Bentley. It's still the understated Volvo you're used to, but with a little more flair than you've seen in the past. And a cool new feature as an option, a built-in kids booster seat. Of course, the booster seat is in the back for the kids, up front for mom and dad, a very nice Bowers and Wilkins stereo system, and a massive nine and a half inch touchscreen monitor that does navigation, radio controls, climate control, everything you can think of. You know, Kelly, it's funny, the screens inside these cars just seem to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger every year, don't they? They sure are, Marty. Take this Mercedes-Benz E-Class, for example, whose display and screen interface span more than two feet wide. Between our smartphones, tablets, and computers, screens have become a big part of our everyday lives. But it begs the question, is bigger always better? From somebody that drives in heavy traffic all the time, I would say bigger is better. Not for me personally. I can speak for most people and say that yes, it is. I disagree with that. I got like a mid-sized type screen on a vehicle. So. I go big or go home. My Chrysler's got a 14 inch and uh, I love it. I could never go back to anything else. We got some surprisingly mixed feelings, but for many, screen size and functionality are important when buying a car. Oh my gosh, that's like the main part of the car. Well, I like how they're pushing towards autonomous, so if I have nothing to do, I'm gonna watch a television. Having an interactive screen seems to be the norm across all vehicle levels, from the affordable Chevy Bolt, which has a 10.2 inch MyLink screen, to the top market Genesis with a 12.3 inch display that could leave this car's owner with a case of screen envy. Screens in our cars are keeping us up to date with traffic, routing, weather, even social media. Get this, the Kia Telluride concept is even reporting personal health and wellness stats. The opportunities and potential seem endless. In fact, even NASCAR's getting into the act. For the first time ever, digital dash displays are mandatory in all Sprint Cup cars. Marty, there's one thing I think we can all agree on after walking around the auto show floor here in Detroit. Outside of the car, bigger is certainly better. Well, thanks, Kelly. Unfortunately, that's going to do it for our time here in Detroit. Over the last hour, we've been able to show you over 40 concept and production vehicles. We've seen everything from the rugged to the exotic to the fast, and we hope you have found a car that you might purchase this year. You know, 2015 was a record-setting sales year for the auto industry in the U.S., and if the floor in Detroit is any indication, 2016 might be just as strong. For Kelly Stavis, Kevin Lee, and Townsend Bell, I'm Marty Snyder. Thanks for joining us for the 2016 North American International Auto Show. We'll see you in the showroom.